begin the broadcast with our top focus this hour and it is the biggest international news today that's coming in from Iran. Now, Iran has scrapped its controversial morality police unit just two months after it triggered violent nationwide protests across the country following the arrest and the death of Masa Amini. This is a 22-year-old woman who, remember, was arrested by the notorious unit for allegedly violating the country's strict female dress code. Now, her death in the month of September has sparked a nationwide protest across Iran. It has also gone on to challenge the Islamic regime's authority. Now, the unit has been patrolling since 2006. While it was only tasked with enforcing the strict mandatory hijab law in the country, however, uh, what they were told to do is only issue warnings to women who are not following the dress code. However, in the recent past, in the last few years, uh, they, this unit now has started arresting women. Now, this issue of freedom of choice versus religion is an important one. And we need to talk about it and understand it because this is about the lives and rights of lakhs of women in the world. Today, it's Iran. Tomorrow, it can be somewhere else. Now, that's the reason we need to have a dialogue and understand where these issues come from. And for that, I'm being joined by two very special guests tonight, Zainab Sikandar, writer, columnist, as well as activist, and also Vaswati Mukherjee, a former ambassador. Both of you, thank you so much uh, for giving us your time here on Mirror Now. Um, Ms. Sikandar, to you first. You know, the Attorney General of Iran says that morality police has nothing to do with judiciary. Don't you think, uh, you know, this is an extremely uh, convenient statement for the government to say now, given that there is, you know, no end to protests. We've see, been seeing some violent scenes in the country for the last two months. If it didn't have a role to play, why have it in the first place? Absolutely. Uh, the morality police, it's known as uh, gasht e imran in Iran. And their basic, um, more, you know, the... the foundation of their of their entire work was to basically harass women who were not wearing the hijab and that was not their purpose the purpose was warning but of course they became law to themselves as most of these extrajudicious bodies become and uh, you know it was being misused and it was being done under the nose of the government the government you know, was sitting, you know, watching Dev Dumb Blind uh, to this Gashte Imran, you know, wreaking havoc all over Iran on women uh, to the point that they started murdering women for mm -hmm. not wearing the hijab. Now, wearing the hijab or not wearing the hijab is a debate that's happened over these protests, but that's not the focus. The focus is the choice of a woman. If she wants to wear a hijab, great. If she doesn't want to wear the hijab, that's also great. The problem in Iran was they didn't give women a choice. They simply asked them to wear the hijab. And uh, it's a great celebration for all of us women, uh, especially the women of Iran who have, uh, you know, stood their ground, fought against the regime. And today, the this morality police has been abolished. And it's a great day. And of course, till now, it was very convenient for the government to look away, but they couldn't. That's the power of protests. Well, absolutely. You know, Zainab, they're making a very important point that they could have given the women in the country a choice uh, to, you know, wear it or not wear it. And then the f flexibility that the government now talks about, unfortunately. Uh, Baswati Mukherjee, the fact that the morality police has been reined in now, is it because they genuinely want to quell the anger or is, you know, the international criticism uh, that is making to do, uh, you know, uh, forcing them to take this step now? Well, first of all, uh... Apiksha, I would like to congratulate you for having this program, which is of fundamental importance, and congratulate through you all the women in Iran for their huge victory. But let us not also forget that the Iranian women's movement was supported by Iranian men. Uh, and that is also very important. The Iranian mm. uh, football team, for instance, this was very dangerous for them when they did not sing the national anthem. Absolutely. Or Iranian men who courageously spoke out. Because what is a mass movement after all? But a people's movement, irrespective mm. of gender, the Iranian men supported the, the uh, efforts of Iranian women to have the freedom to choose their attire, as we just heard. That is to say, wearing or not wearing should be left to the woman concerned and not be forced upon her, and that if she exercises her free choice and decides, for instance, not to wear it, as in this unfortunate instance in the cafe, I remember, then her, the punishment uh, uh, was actually death. She died. So uh, I think that 
Iran did a very clever thing by abolishing it in this manner and not saying that it's a judicial matter because in doing so, uh, they have actually saved face because in effect, the Iranian regime after so many years has bowed to the voice of the people of Iran, mm. women and men. They have had to back down. They've had to blink Sim similar, quite similar to Xi Jinping changing his zero COVID policy. Mm. When you have a regime which is not amenable to listening to a, a reasonable protest or suggestion uh, and, the, and the movement becomes a mass movement as it was clearly a mass movement, uh, then a wise regime, in this case, the Iranian regime, uh, decided that they would uh, go in for a face saver, which was to abolish the morality police, which in effect means what? It means that tomorrow, if an Iranian woman wants to wear a hijab, that's fine. If she does not want to wear a hijab and she's sitting in a cafe with her friends, having a coffee, she was not going to be taken away, put in jail, tortured, imprisoned, or killed. That's a very big victory for human rights and women's rights. And as I said, as a woman, I rejoice today with all the women of Iran. And I congratulate the Iranian men for supporting this movement. Well, absolutely. Uh, you know, Ms. Mukherjee, I agree with you. This is a very big day for human rights and uh, especially for those women who are uh, in Iran. Uh, Zainab, you know, Iran has strict rules on dress and behavior, especially for women in public. But, you know, what we're seeing today, was there a need to really have a morality unit, you know, arrest these women, harass them? Uh, in a sense, what I'm trying to ask you that is this a reflection of the Islamic teachings that we often talk about? Thank you for asking this question because uh, I'm a practicing Muslim myself and, you know, I'd like to point out that Islam very, very clearly points out to the fact that in religion, everything starts with intention. So say, for example, I am asked to wear the hijab and my intention is not to wear the hijab. The sum total of what I'm doing, you know, even if I put a cloth on my head, is zero because my intention is not to do so. In fact, Prophet Muhammad in one of his hadiths has said very clearly that you cannot ask a person, there is no... Uh, there's no coercion in religion. This is even an ayat in the Quran, which I mean to say is it's a verse in the Quran. And mm -hmm. it's also a part of Prophet Muhammad's sayings that there's no coercion. There's no force forcing anybody in religion. That's why you cannot force convert anybody. You cannot ask anyone to follow anything. You cannot even tell someone to say your namaz more than three times. Mm. You cannot ask someone. So it, in fact, misrepresents Islam so completely. It is so sad. This is the reason Islamophobia is growing around the world, because the countries representing Islam, calling themselves Islamic republics, are not doing what they should be doing, which is giving the clear picture of what Islam is. In fact, they're only showcasing very feudal mindsets, patriarchal and misogynist mindsets, you know, and which are very clearly anti-women laws, which the men prefer. They are not Islamic at all. I have to make this very, very clear. Mm. So do you, do you think that this is a great start? Do you think that this mass movement that you see in Iran is going to change everything that, to, that you just said right now that seems so unfair as a woman to me? Do you think this is going to change all those things? Of course, it is going to change. And like uh, ma'am rightly said, you know, why do you think the men in Iran also were, you know, uh, you know, along with the women, you know, protesting and saying that we don't agree with this? Because it's not part of Islam. Anybody who has basic knowledge of the Quran and Hadith will tell you that whatever the Iranian regime was doing was only a feudal way of working, it wasn't the Islamic law. It mm. wasn't what Islam prescribes or recommends. So that is the reason I think it's a huge step to, um, you know, quash all the propaganda against Islam, which mm. shows it as a very dogmatic religion, which shows it as a a very strict religion. In fact, um, Islam is a very flexible religion. 1400 years ago, Islam had property rights and uh, had an entire chapter in the Quran called An-Nisa, which was written for women, where all their liberties and their rights and, um, you know, whatever they, uh, they needed to, you know, progress in life was spoken about by God and written in law. So um, I hope that people get to 
study Islam more clearly now because only certain verses are cherry picked to always, you know, bash Islam publicly and to drive a certain propaganda which perpetuates Islamophobia. This step in Iran will make people think that why did the government abolish it? Because they know they don't have any basis in the Islamic religion to, uh, you know, um, recommend a morality police. There is nothing like this in Islam. Mm. You know, uh, Ms. Mukherjee, you know, like we're given to understand that this is not part of Islam. What we're seeing in Iran is not part of Islamic teachings. You know, you're a former ambassador. You understand these things better. Geopolitically speaking, Iran has accused the United States and its, you know, its allies of fomenting this unrest uh, just to, you know, target Iran and its foundations. Uh, how far do you think that these uh, claims are true by Iran? Well, first of all, I would like to say that I completely agree with what has been said by my co-panelists. Uh, when I was in Delhi University, one of the papers I had in my way was Islam, the mm -hmm. classic book. And those days was Islam by, by Gibbs. And what he wrote is 100% what has just been stated. Now, were these protests being foiled by the West? My response is that the West were wise in not wading into this controversy. Mm. Because countries like Iran or India, which have been colonized in the past, getting Western support for a mass movement inside, which is going to succeed in any case, is like a kiss of death to the mass movement. Mm. That's what I said on television earlier. Mm. The Iranian women do not need any Western patronizing or condescending uh, comment from the West saying, we are so glad that Iran is getting human rights back, etc. This makes the situation of Iranian women struggling to get their rights so much worse that I am glad that for a change, the West understood that it was better for them to give tacit support from outside, but let this movement develop into a mass movement, which it did, supported, as I said, by Iranian men and all citizens across Iran. Mm -hmm. Let us also not forget that this is a country that has suffered greatly from oppression and colonialism. And even when they had their Islamic revolution, let us not forget that Iranian women were never stopped from becoming doctors, lawyers, etc. In other words, they were never reached the terrible conditions of women in Saudi Arabia. Mm. Iran is a different nation. It's a proud nation. We have a shared history, culture and heritage with Iran. I feel so comfortable when I'm sitting with Iranians. Mm. And I, I think that the West would do well to understand that countries like Iran, which have suffered so much from external intervention or efforts to prop up regimes from outside, they would be best left to settle their issues on their own, as they have shown, with great courage. It took so much courage. I used to be so worried every day when I used to see these demonstrations hmm. that, they, that they were being put down in a very bloody-minded manner. But today is such a proud moment, as I said, that the Iranian mass movement has succeeded. It has demonstrated that a mass movement from inside a country, when it acquires its own momentum, it has to succeed. Otherwise, are you going to use your armed forces against your mothers, your sisters, your wives? Will any Iranian armed force do that? Mm. No, it's a mass movement. The armed forces will at some point stop and say, we cannot kill our mothers, we cannot kill our sisters, we cannot kill our wives. So that's why it succeeded, because mm. it was also supported by Iranian men. So I think to come back to my long answer to your short question is that in many times, uh, a picture, as a diplomat, I'm telling you, mm. it, is, it is circumspect to mind your own business and give support in a circumspect manner rather than wading in a typical uh, Western way into a raging controversy, then start giving lectures on what the Quran says, what the Quran's interpretation says. I would like to hear that from a Muslim, mm. not, not from a non-Muslim. If a Muslim tells me what the Quran is all about, I'm a practicing Hindu, I will listen. I don't want to hear lectures on Islam coming from outside by people who have exploited the Iranians. So I'm glad that for a change, they were circumspect. And because they were circumspect, it was easier for the movement to succeed. Mm. Uh, and I think that that also gives lessons to the West on how to handle Iran. Iran is too important a country to be isolated. Iran is too important a country to be pushed into a corner. Mm. 
that is why despite all pressure on us we have always engaged with iran iran is too important for india for us to be uh, bullied by the west and told no no you can't do this you can't do that we we decided on a on our bilateral relation with iran depending on our national interest and our national interest is it's a very important country with whom we have shared strategic interests we are in the same region and we have a shared heritage so it is not possible for india to turn its back on iran and i think the that's the most important thing on foreign policy of asia which is foreign policy has to be based on a, one's own core national interest it cannot be dictated by outside Uh, absolutely uh, you know miss mukherjee the very fact that we're having this conversation today means that there are a lot of positive things in store for iran well hopefully you know but if you look at what the attorney general you know in iran back then said that the parliament and the judiciary is working to modify the law now he didn't say exactly which aspects of the law will be modified but you know having said that what can we expect given that both the bodies are largely in the hands of conservatives uh, can we go ahead and think that uh, you know there will probably be brighter days for women in iran maybe this entire thing of wearing hijab you know will be uh, you know will go away first of all there's a lot of uh, misinterpretation about what is a hijab because for instance very elegantly dressed muslim women friends of mine in abu dhabi etc they wear these great scarves or matching you know matching headgear it's almost like a hat for western mm. women and they do that of their own free choice and uh, that is exactly what what my, uh, my co panelist was saying that it's a freedom of choice now the iranian government clearly will have to modify its rules while saving their face so i'm sure that while they will not say in so many words that women have the freedom of choice by abolishing the morality police in effect what are they saying they are saying women do have the freedom of choice please ladies do try to use a scarf whenever you can but if you don't you're not going to be penalized that's that ultimately the 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 results boil down to what i'm saying in plain english which mm. is that and most iranian ladies do wear scarves when they go out if they don't want to wear a scarf it's up to them it's ex- it's exactly uh, it also depends on the weather it depends on the conditions where they are uh, maybe it's safer sometimes for them to wear a scarf or not wear a scarf as my co panelist said the choice should be left to them women are very sensible and intelligent people they can themselves decide when it is judicious to wear a scarf and when it is judicious not to wear a scarf like for instance when we go into a place of worship whether we are hindus or muslims we pick i at least i cover my head when i go into a place of worship right. because that's my way of showing respect to my god mm. so that these are these are individual choices mm. they should be left to the individual concern and i think that we have actually reached a situation a picture where the iranian government has blinked first not the iranian women and they will bring about some kind of a you know what we call in hindi gol mol which means uh, rounded uh, a very rounded kind of a uh, law uh, which in effect will mean that since there is no implementation mechanism mm. the choice is left to women that's what it means mm. because there is no the coercive implementation mechanism has been abolished so it's a for me it's a clear victory for iranian women and again great news and congratulations to all of them zena what do you think is there hope that since the morality police has been scrapped the law uh you know the law itself will be terminated of course i think this is a huge step and now the government of iran can't turn back in fact i think this is uh, you know um the revolution that iran needed i mean what was iran in 1970s i mean when you look at pictures you know it looked like a european country and uh, i don't want to uh, you know base traditions and culture and match them with with western sensibilities not at all every country has their own uh, way of being every religion has their own tradition every culture is unique um, i'm not trying to put down any culture or tradition but what i'm trying to say is that coercion is wrong women cannot be told what to wear mm. if i choose to wear a hijab 
and and the greatest example is the hijab controversy in india mm. if there are uh, young college going women who want to wear the hijab you cannot ask them not to wear the hijab similarly if there are women in iran who do not want to wear the hijab they cannot be told please wear the hijab i mean this is ridiculous you know i mean for eons women have been told what to do and i think it's about time people stop telling women what to do and iran is such a great example now that the world will see and i'm so glad that it started with muslim women because muslims have been bashed for years now especially after 911 for being very regressive being very backward being very rigid and not sort of breaking out of that black box of not thinking with the times but mm-hmm. iran and iranian women and men have shown very clearly that uh, muslims in respect and uh, we have a very very uh, unique world vision where we know how to you know keep our religion and the world and how it's evolving and take the two at the at the same time and you know go ahead in life so i don't think there is any looking back from here like ma'am said the government has blinked and now there's no going back from it i'm hoping that you know the law entire law will be scrapped which tells women that they need to dress a certain way and i want to point out another thing that in islam hijab is not only recommended for women it's also recommended for men but hijab for men because hijab is a concept it doesn't mean head scarf hijab means modesty it's the concept of modesty mm-hmm. and for men the hijab is to lower their gaze when they look at a woman who's not a part of their family they're supposed to lower their gaze i wish the morality police was also set in place for men to make sure have they lowered their gaze but the hijab morality police was only exclusively kept for women so uh, all in all it's a huge success for women in iran for muslim women for the muslim community and i'm hoping things will be much brighter ahead in iran well absolutely uh, you know both of you it's been such an interesting conversation thank you so much for giving me your time it's been an absolute pleasure Thank you very much. Best of luck. Thank you.